Oh, hi, welcome back to the shop. Uh, good to see you again. And um, I've got a question. Can we turn a palm rotor into a tool post grinder? I'm not sure, but we'll have a go. Right, this is that well-known brand, Von Haus. Never heard of them. Um, it was the cheapest palm router I could find on the internet that had variable speed uh, and I think the variable speed is very useful for what I want to do with it so uh, uh, I, uh, the intention is to, to make it into a tool post grinder but not destroy it in the process because you know at some point I might want to use a palm sander a palm router rather so um, it comes with a spare set of brushes some really cheap and crappy fences, uh, one of the cheapest spanners you're ever likely to want to use, uh, and a couple of die cast bits and pieces for, for um, following contours. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like a reasonable bit of kit. Uh, I intend to use it with things like these. Um, that's uh, a small uh, grinding wheel. Um, I bought a load of different grinding points and wheels and um, with the smaller diameters this this thing can do I think let me tell you what the revs can do it can do 13,000 up to 33,000 so uh, I'm not saying for one moment this would cope with 33,000 but some of the Dremel really tiny points <coughs> excuse me really tiny points might well do Right, we're clearly over at the lathe, and um, this gives you some idea of the scale. It, it's uh, it, it's a pretty ideal sort of size. It's uh, I think it's a 700 watt motor, so it's got sufficient power to do some some proper grinding. And um, I've taken the tool post off the lathe. There's there are, I think there are a couple of options. There's a, a chap in America who um, um, produces. Let me just slide this tool post back on. I'll show you. He produces a, um, an adapter that fits uh, a quick change tool, tool post and then clamps onto the, um, the palm router thus fashion. And uh, I thought, I don't really want to repeat exactly what he does. He's doing it commercially. I don't want to copy him. Um, so I was going to come up with a different scenario. So what I've decided to do is um, either make a new tool post and a, slot, a, a, a tube to clamp the palm rotor in place like this or to put it over here and have a secondary spindle, a proper milling, uh, sorry, grinding spindle um, running this way and a, a, a couple of uh, pulleys here so I could change speed. This has change speed on it but it's, uh, it's a bit limited in, um, in its minimum speed, 13,000 is minimum and it doesn't have very good load regulation so it will um, slow down dramatically so uh, you really need to be able to turn it up uh, and having a, a pulley arrangement and gearing it down would actually give you more torque oddly enough um, so they're the two options either mount it like this with a secondary spindle or mount it like that and use the direct spindle the other problem <coughs> I may have is at this end it looks like it's got a proper bearing in it because it's a that's a beefy bit of casting this end looks like and i don't know without taking it to pieces but it looks like it may be a plastic housing for the bearing so there could be some um some compliance wobble if you like at that end so i'm not sure that this will be stiff enough as is to give us some really good grinding results however um, I'm going to go with this scenario instead of this uh, scenario in a secondary spindle purely because at this end there's a fan and the fan it sucks air through the cooling fins this way 
and out through the bottom. So when you use it as a, as a palm router, it's blowing the dust away and it's not ingesting its own dust. Whereas if I put that here and a secondary spindle is, is grinding away here, it could relatively easily, even with a shroud, still ingest its own um, uh, dust. Uh, and carborundum dust in that will make short work of it. So the, the option there, I think, would be to dismantle it and remake another fan with the air blowing the other way, which is a lot of aggro. So we, we're going to go with uh, this scenario. So uh, if we go to CAD, I'll show you what I did. Right, so here we are in Fusion 360. I've modelled up the tool slide in the lathe. As you can see, it's quite a simple part. In the bottom, we need this clamp plate um, that slides into that um, captive slot. Um, on top of that, we need another one, a uh, base plate. There we go. That um, Clamping those two together will, will hold this, um, this new tool post in place. Um, we need two webs, as you can see, and um, a clamp ring. That's the, the, the palm router is going to slide in through there and three screws at the top will hold it tight in theory. Uh, and it should be designed so that it's on centre height for the lathe. It isn't, but it should be. Also, we need to have some form of um, guard on it. Uh, so I've uh, designed this, this extra um, shroud, if you like, that uh, uh, is going to fit around the end of the uh, palm router. Uh, and be locked in place with a little uh, screw. So moving over to the scrap binium, where I've got some uh, quite sizable chunks of steel and scrap. Um, that's a, a meaty piece of mild, I think. Not really sure what it is, but it looks mild. So there you go, it's mild. Mark it off to the right length, and uh, we pop over to my little portable bandsaw and slice the chunk off, which takes a little while. Whilst the bandsaw is busy cutting away, I um, uh, decide I'll, I'll just prep the um, lathe. I'm using a, a, an ER32 collet in my little collet chuck whoops, uh, to just put a little centre point in so that I can measure the centre height of the, uh, the, the lathe. And what I need to know is the distance from the top of the tool slide to that centre line. It's in there somewhere with all the half-eaten sandwiches and uh, used tissues. Nice. So here we are back at the lathe. I've got this little um, vernier, digital vernier height gauge. It's uh, it's not very accurate. It's, I think it's really intended for the woodworking brigade. Cheap and nasty. But it, it does make a reasonable measurement. So that's what I need. 26.9. That's, uh, that's the crucial measurement I need for the future. That I also got horribly wrong. But we'll see. The problem with this tube is it's too short to hold in the vise for the um, uh, portable bandsaw, so I've uh, decided to go handheld and hold it in the vise, but uh, it didn't really work. And I had, uh, in the end, well, there you go. In the end, I think I had three or four different attempts before I actually got the damn thing to, to, to work properly. I think this was the best option to cut halfway through like this. This is the other problem I get regularly with this saw. The um, the bands break. I've not worn a single blade out yet in this thing. It uh, it just breaks them. So uh, here we are with the brand new blade and uh, we finish the job off. I'm slowly amassing the parts here. I've got this old piece of um, heavy duty angle plate. Uh, whenever I need a bit of plate, I hack another lump off it. So um, it's, I think it was scrap. So it's actually proved to be quite a reasonable way to get hold of flat plate material, but it just takes a fair while to um, machine it into something usable. I mean, you can see it's, it's basically crap.
Well, that's uh, all the parts amassed. So uh, next up is to get onto the uh, lathe and start machining. I've had to do a, a building refurb job recently, um, and uh, I bought myself a set of these um, hole saws. They're by metal and they were reasonably cheap. But um, I thought, I wonder, could I actually save some material by using one of these on the uh, uh, on the, the tube that I need to make and just hack out the centre section? Because uh, that strikes me that's a fair bit of material there that you just turn into chips otherwise. So I thought I'll give this a go and see whether or not it works. So uh, watch this. I came to the conclusion that I'm on the lathe. Uh, it's going to keep itself relatively um, lined up and, and central and, and follow the um, follow the path that it creates for itself. So I thought I don't need the central drill, and that did help. And um, as you can see, I've got a little way into the into the part. But uh, to be perfectly honest, I think the problem with these cutters is if you look at the difference between these and a proper annular cutter for for metal then um, you'll find that there's nowhere for the chips to go. So you have to empty the, the chip gullies every few seconds. And that means that it would take me a couple of hours to go through here. So I bowled out and decided I'll get the big drill, uh, drill a pilot hole as, uh, right the way through, and then start boring it out, just turn it into, into chips. It's a waste. Would I do it again? If I was using expensive material that I'd paid for or um, material that's hard to come by, like Ali Bronze, something like that, then I might consider actually trying to save the slug in the middle. But for this, nah, not worth it. So having turned all that metal into swarf, it's uh, time to move on and get onto the mill. I need a flat surface for the uh, MIDI pallets that I use. So um, uh, here I've scribed a, uh, a line in the centre so I can find the centre of the part. And I've just changed from the pointer to that the new um, through-hole coolant uh, tool that I made a, a few videos ago. Um, just set the height, in that case it's 8mm above the surface, run the cycle, I just use the Mac 3 surfacing routine uh, because it's quick and it's easy and uh, there you go a few minutes later it's done the job for me this is the beauty of CNC while it's getting on with the menial task just flattening off the surface of that uh, those plate pieces I've got time to leave it be and get on with uh, the next task so here I am just boring out and checking the uh, uh, diameter, the internal diameter, I should say, of the of the tube. So that the, um, uh, here it is, so that the palm router will actually fit in nice and snugly, which it did, I have to say, really nicely. I have to say that uh, using the super glue technique and uh, painter's tape has, has been a bit of a game changer for me. The uh, It makes it so much easier to uh, put pieces uh, uh, onto the mill and be able to machine all the way around them. What I do find is, though, uh, I use cheap bargain store industrial grade super glue, and I'm not really sure if it is proper industrial grade, but uh, it seems to be good enough generally. Having said that, on this particular occasion, it didn't work. I've got an 80 grit flat wheel in the uh, in my cheap little drill here, and uh, I found that with a little bit of um, careful use you could get a really interesting finish on this metal so uh, have a look at that i think that looks like it's almost been ground it's not quite but it's good enough back on the mill where we uh, start to profile the, uh, the the clamping plate and the bottom plate for the uh, uh, the this new tool post i'm making and uh, yeah i mean this is real time so uh, even this little mill is capable of, of pushing a little bit of metal. It's not terribly powerful, but it seems to do the job quite nicely. Uh, and here we are just um, uh, spiraling down to do the central hole. Job done. Back round with the finish end mill. The previous one was a roughing tool. Tabbly tap tap, as everybody seems to have to say. Uh, 
isn't this a sign of a cautious man i'm back on the mill and uh, i'm going to do both of the webs together and on the same part and i'm stood there with my finger over the stop button expecting something to go wrong all starts off absolutely fine i walk away turn my back on it and would you believe this happens the uh, super glue failed or the tape failed i should say and uh, it nearly wrecked the parts they were nearly done so i just finished them off by hand on the linisha this is a block of steel that's going to form the clamp on the tube to hold the um, uh, motor in place. Uh, and as you can see, I'm uh, I'm not been having a good day with my uh, super glue and tape technique. This uh, promptly comes away within seconds of starting the operation. Blast! So I decide to conventionally mill it and then flip it over and uh, carry on the process that way. There's uh, uh, I only need a a thin sliver of the material out of this this block so there's quite a lot to come off it so basically all I needed to do was um, just flatten the bottom off and I used a, a three flute cutter that I made several years ago now so here we go uh, spin it over and uh, plop it on a couple of parallels in the jolly old vice and then uh, we can do the outside profile final op and uh, we're just going around again after using a, um, a roughing end mill this is a finish end mill and we're just taking it to final profile back in CAD let's um, just turn off all the extra parts that we don't need to see at the moment so this leaves us with just the the sleeve that's going to hold the um, uh, the motor in place and on the top of the sleeve is a clamp bar this is the clamp bar and uh, if I show you this profile you can see it's curved because it it's the it fits the other way up and it has to fit on the top of that uh, cylinder so uh, I came up with uh, this I thought I've never done this before so I chose a spiral path to see whether or not um, it, it's going to do the job for me. It did, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and this is just a quick animation of, of what the cutter is going to do. Uh, I speed this up in a second. There we go. So you don't have to sit there for hours watching it. But uh, that's the path. It took it, I think, about 20 minutes or so to do. And here we are back on the mill where it gets on with it. We've got a six millimeter diameter ball end mill in high speed steel because I don't have any uh, uh, carbide ones. Uh, and you can see I'm running this spiral tool path um in order to scallop the interior out because it's this this is the face that's going to sit on a tube so it has to actually have a, a concave surface otherwise it won't fit very well and i decided that i was going to do that because i thought i'm going to braise this in position and the closer i can get the joint the more likely the uh the the brass is to actually flow into that joint and seal it up properly. Here you can see just how concave it turned it out turned out to be in the end. Quite like the finish, but um, it's a little bit wibbly wobbly, but it's all right. It does the job. And there you can see on the tube that's exactly where it's where it's going to fit. And uh, the closer the fit there, the better. I did do a bit of post fixing off camera just to make it absolutely spot on. This is the or this is going to be the clamp nut and I'm um, just uh, this is a little speeded up operation to see the uh, touch pro working it said it measured at 33.6 and uh, and I measured it with the calipers at 33.66 that's within the margin of error I would expect on this little uh, uh, DIY probe I made so uh, here we go we, again with a I think this is a six mil roughing end mill whip round a few times and then turn this into a nut then uh, change tool and, and uh, go around again with the finish end mill and uh, jobs are good. Un.
and here's the proof just as we've uh, finished you get the uh, one inch spanner 25 mil 25 and a bit mil and uh, just try it and see whether or not it fits so um, here we go spot on I whipped a quick M10 thread through the uh, center of it This part is the central shaft. This will have uh, the M10 thread that that nut fits on on the top and on the bottom it'll be welded to the bottom plate so um, it, it, that will form the, the, the clamping system. You'll see in uh, coming up in a minute or two how, how it all fits together. Uh, this was some fairly rubbishy old scrap steel I found but it's good enough for the job. Here's my tailstock die holder. I made this at least 15 to 20 years ago uh, and I'm thinking that it's probably time to uh, have another go and, and make a new one which is partly the reason for making this tool post grinder because um, um, in the tailstock is a, an MT3 taper uh, and it's not long enough so in order to get it out you have to get pliers on it uh, the auto eject doesn't work so you have to get pliers on it and, and lever it out and of course it's uh, over the years it's got pretty manky so I wondered if I should um, have a go at grinding up an MT3 taper that's long enough to uh, um, be ejected when you wind the handwheel back so there we go there are all the parts as machined at the at the moment the only thing left to do is the what will be the clamp plate that piece there has got a uh, have three holes drilled through it and uh, what I did was mark it out use the mill to um, put the holes in initially and then finish it all off on the drill press and uh, uh, tap them by hand they're clearance drilled halfway through 4.2 uh, millimeters and they're tapped 4 mil the uh, through the rest of it and there you go there is the last operation just tapping it this is arguably the most important part, it's the guard. Just a ring and a piece of bent steel to catch the parts. Off camera I turned up the ring for the uh, uh, palm router. That, uh, that ring there is a snug running fit on the body of the, um, of the router. And uh, I'm using a little um, air nibbler. Air shear I think it's called. Uh, and it makes some really nice little curly... Um, quite relatively safe because anything sheet metal is always a bit on the sharp side but uh, it it, it uh, produces some nice swarf that's easy to get rid of I've got a, a a little tiny nibbler that makes what look like toenails and they're as sharp as hypodermics horrible right you can see here that there's a flat and uh, I just push the uh, the shears through that to get rid of that flat section because I don't have a set of bending rolls so this is how I decided I was going to do it just manipulate the metal by hand over that roller so here I'm using the shears again just to cut it off to the right length and uh, I have to say they're they're a pretty useful bit of tool to be honest useful bit of kit to have right so there we are that's what the um, guard is is going to look like it's uh, it needs welding all up and shaping a little bit and uh, an extra tube added for the hoover uh, to get some dust extraction Right, so here we are at the temporary hearth. Uh, I've got um, uh, the, the sleeve that the router is going to slide into, uh, and we're just brazing on the the top bar, the, the clamp bar. My son popped in and gave me a hand with this because you you just you really need three or four hands to hold everything in place because it, it wants to slide off. So there we go. That's uh, it cooling down. And uh, sorry about the lack of focus here, but you can see the brass has penetrated all the way through. That's good. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to have to pause the video here because uh, it's getting a bit long and, uh, and a bit tedious, to be honest. Uh, I've got a kit of bits, so it's purely a case of welding it all together and trying it out. That's where it all went wrong, but uh, you'll see that next time if you join me. Anyway, take care of yourselves and uh, please hit the bell and subscribe button and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one where we uh, hopefully get this thing finished.